Well, Buster Beagle machine hard at work again tonight. It's uh, busy running these parts here. They're kind of a different than our normal parts, but flatter. You can see it's a pretty nice smooth stroke down into the crucible. I hold it for about 13 seconds. Then I fill the uh, crucible back to what it needed. Anyways, had a few people ask me about making parts that how do you determine the parameters or what's going wrong with when you're making a part. Well, here I just had a bunch of failures on my last run and I actually kept them to make this video. So, first part that came out was like this and well you might wonder what can uh, cause that. Well there's three things in my mind that causes that. One is a cold mold. Second is not enough hot material from the previous shot or not enough time between shots to warm the new material up. And number three, not enough pressure pushing down. Well, I use pretty thin um, parts. My thing is... Mine is one millimeter thick in here. So it's a pretty thin and it's a pretty big area that you're trying to fill. So here's a good part here. So you can see that it's filled it quite nicely. So I only run minimum temperature on my mold of 60 degrees centigrade. I have two mold heaters. I got one right there and I got one right there. And the heat transfers into the mold right there. And I got a heat probe that monitors that on the corner of the mold. And I have that PID controller down there maintaining my 60 degrees. I uh, found that on this larger part here, I had to run about 80 or 85 degrees. I think it's 80 degrees. I have to look at my notes. But it's, it wouldn't work at 60 degrees. You end up with this big hole like this every single time. There's a whole bunch of holes. So as the mold gets hotter, you'll, the, uh, you can see it migrates further into it. So 60 degrees, If I, in my opinion, I'm using polypropylene. If you don't have 60 degrees, then cold molds... It drove me crazy. I couldn't get it to work either. I discovered that I needed the mold heater by taking a propane torch and heating the mold. And then I'd get a perfect shot, but then I get two or three shots and then I start getting failures again. So I had to resort to putting mold heaters in it. Probably mainly because my parts are so thin. And uh, without that, it just, it just solidifies coming across. So you can see this one here too. This is typical. I would get the outer piece injected and then they would get a failure in here. So if I don't have 60 degrees on my mold and it hasn't sat there for at least 10 minutes at 60 degrees so everything's eucalyzed, then I don't even start shooting. The next thing is, is the plastic temperature. Now I use two heat zones on mine. I actually cut a groove in there. You can see it right in there. And I run two separate PID controllers. That's running at 260 degrees. That's running at 130 degrees. The reason I do that is if I have 260 degrees on both of them, I get a lot of plastic coming on the plunger. And it's, the plastic sticks to the inside. And I really do need the temperature to get it into my mold, into the far corners of it. So I can't get away with 180, 90 degrees. It just won't flow. I need the more runny fluid. So I have a PID controller here and I have another one up here running the two uh, temperature zones. Now I know uh, some people actually only run the lower and they just disconnect the top one. So they just run the bottom one at 260 and the top one they just have turned off. That does work too. I kind of wanted to maximize my heat to the maximum I can get away with. So I could run this up to about 155, more like 150 degrees. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, but in this particular shot, I found that 130 is the best, and 260 
It's a bit of tinkering to get that. So when I have 260 degrees on my plastic and it's been in the crucible for at least five minutes and I have my mold at 60 degrees, then the only left is my pressure. Now I personally have not shot any of my molds below 70 PSI. In fact, tonight's the lowest I've ever run. I think I'm running at 70 PSI tonight or 75. Um, these parts over here, they run at 100 PSI. And these ones here are running about 90 PSI. So I use a lot of pressure, a lot of temperature, and a lot of heat. But then I get a good product at the end of the day. It comes up quite nice and clean and it fills up nicely. So heat in the mold. You have to have time between your cycles. This part here takes five minutes between the previous shot and the next one I can do because if there's just plain not enough warm plastic in the crucible to shoot into the mold if I don't let it sit for five minutes. That was a frustrating thing. I didn't actually know that when I first started doing it. So I kept shooting it and shooting it. And I ended up with a lot of holes in my parts and that was just the plastic wasn't runny enough or warm enough you can see here's a really cold mold that I hadn't warmed up enough yet and uh, this probably was the cycle I was adjusting the cycle time between them so I was trying to get it down to around 250 seconds or less so at say 300 seconds I would have a perfect uh, start but um, when I start reducing the time, I start getting getting uh, failures in here. So I play with it until I get a perfect shot on a regular basis, maybe add 10 seconds to that. So I just get some uh, security that I don't have a failure when I'm not around. So that's what all I can really tell you guys how I figured out. Oh, yeah, here's another. This is too much heat. So this is when the plastic sat in the crucible for an extended period of time while I was fixing something, adjusting something when I hit to shoot it. Now I'm shooting a little bit more like watery plastic instead of thick goo gooey plastic. And it actually builds enough pressure to flash between the two molds and separate the molds apart. And so that would be the plastic itself is too hot. Uh, guaranteed. I wouldn't say the mold is too hot, but definitely the plastic is too hot. So that would be like if it sat for 10 minutes and then I shot it into a warm mold at higher pressures. I'd have to, if I wanted to use that much of runny warm plastic, I'd have to back way off on my injection pressures. Um, but like I said, I, I try to run as quick a cycle time as I can get away with. So I run higher pressures the hottest temperature I can without burning the plastic in the crucible, which in my case is, I found 260 degrees. Anything hotter than that, I damaged my plastic. Hope that answers some of the questions I've been getting tonight. One other thing I was going to mention, it's big cylinders use a lot of air. Now my compressor is down in my shop, which is about 150 feet away. So I have an old compressor that I use just as a, an air tank. So the air tank is sitting right here and the compressor is on the other side of the house. And it's a small little compressor. It's actually, I'll, I'll post a link to it. It's a screw compressor, really quiet. And so that compressor with that air tank in the room here is able to run this whole machine here. And if you don't have enough air at the source, these cylinders don't move quick enough. So they don't do a smooth, smooth push. It takes too long to get the air from the end of the airline to, to this room. Even though there's enough air downstairs, I don't have enough air delivered up here through the hose. And that could cause a failure too. So that's why I have, again, this is about a five gallon tank here, I believe. And that's all it is, is just air storage under the desk here and a little teeny compressor. In fact, I'll go down and take a little picture of it for you guys and attach it to this video. Well, this is the old compressor that I used to use and I'm actually using it as um, extra capacity storage. Uh, and if I need a lot of air, I can run this compressor here, but it's loud and annoying. So I went and bought this little teeny one here 
and it's small. I mean, you can see my hand next to it here. It's a small little compressor. Bought it on Amazon, like $170. It's supposed to be ultra quiet. I wouldn't say that about it. It's definitely quieter than my other compressors, but the nice thing about it is it's small enough that it, it's not a huge motor. It's only a one and a quarter horse motor, I believe. And it uh, just charges up these storage tanks and away it goes. Okay, I just had a few other things I wanted to add to this video tonight. I know it's getting a bit long, but every mold takes time to break in. You can help it by adding a little bit of Teflon spray to it. So I, there's this Teflon here. This is a WD-40 Teflon that uh, PI or PTFE spray, which is dry lubricant. I do spray my molds with that once in a while when I'm getting frustrated. I try not to use it if I can get away with it, but even to, just a little bit helps and it will leave a bit of a marks on the mold. So this is the Teflon that was in the mold and marked the part and it's okay. It gets out of one or two parts and just toss them out, but it does help the mold release. The mold does pick up a shine from the plastic that it's doing and so the plastic itself is lubricating and the plastic is adding a um, lubricant to it it's leaving a little bit passing behind and it's also filling in the gaps or filling in the cracks and actually machining the mold for you too is actually polishing it or pull, as it comes out it pulls a little bit of aluminum initially until it's actually got it slippery so there's a little bit of break-in period uh, for molds the other thing too is seating when you first started shooting these, you, I got a fair bit of plastic coming on leakage around my cup that was in the nozzle coming in. So a little bit of this is normal in the beginning. As you get further into it, you can see that there's a lot less now. Um, and it gets less and less as you run it until the point there's almost nothing uh, at all. So... Uh, the latest one here now is right here so this is the latest one so it's getting less by the second or by the cycle so don't be too worried about that it, it does take time i think the nozzle on the end gets a little bit of a coating the, the mold gets a little bit of burnt plastic on the end the input so all that kind of helps make it seal but the reason i actually wanted to mention when you make a change particularly in your cycle time not your temperature of your mold and maybe not even the temperature of the plastic of uh, the crucible, but the cycle time, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to run it down to the minimum cycle time I can get away with. Um, and I've had it down to 180 seconds between shots, depending on the part, but it takes time for that change cycle time to show up. So when you fill the mold, you only shoot shooting like that much of it out, for instance. So that'll leave. So if you think about it at the beginning, you got that much, and then it's that much, and then it's that much. That piece of plastic keeps moving down until it until it goes out and so that means that that temperature zone is heating that plastic the whole time and so it's in here and if you shorten up by 10 seconds you kind of have to let let it cycle through to see what that 10 seconds does because it is additive for the time in it it's not just the individual shot so you want to make sure that you let the plastic that fill got filled move down, move down, move down, and then exit before you shorten up your time again. And I use like 10 seconds. And what will happen is I'll start getting short shots, meaning my mold won't fill because the plastic isn't warm enough. So then I have to add 10 seconds. And then that can be a bit frustrating because it takes time for it to move through. And sometimes it's best just to pause the program and let the plastic warm up and then continue. But, uh, that's something I wanted to mention is that you got to think about the cumulative time in the in the crucible between shots. Otherwise, you'll end up with a failure.